Revival, so a revival means to be revived. Be revived. Be revived. Don't sit on your seat and hold back. Uh, cut loose and let God have the glory. Yes.
knows that heaven's going to be worth yeah. eternity. Yeah. It's going to be worth every pain. Yeah. It's going to be worth every trial. It's going to be worth every heartache. Yeah. Every disappointment. Glory to God. Come on, the rest of you singers. Anyone else that wants to sing? Praise God. Brother, if you want to play the guitar, you can with us.
husband's favorite song that he always loves to sing it together? Yes. One, thank you both. Where can I go? Thank you, Jesus. Living below in the south and more. Oh, 
Praise God. Praise God. Right, <laughs> you did make it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 There's a light in the window, and the table is spread in splendor.
you folks are in revival, we're going to try to get out uh, a night or two and listen to other preachers. But we do thank uh, the Lord for you for having us be here. I count it and consider it an honor to be able to stand in any pulpit yeah. to be able to minister right. the word of God. Amen. 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 I know that uh, you've got some good ones coming. I know yes. Jay Bob personally, and he's a good man. Yes. 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 I know Wanda of uh, awesome. Give me one of the best compliments I believe that anybody could ever give anybody. Didn't say I was handsome, didn't say I was a muscular or nothing like that. <laughs> but she called me a preacher's creature. And that preacher's, preacher's preacher. Uh, Amen. That's the that's biggest good compliment I believe anybody could ever give anybody. And uh, I love uh, Sister Wanda. I met Carolina Court Curtis years ago down in La Paula, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I know that she's a woman of God. And, she yes. bless your heart. Yes. Amen. Yes. But uh, we pray that uh, the Lord will just touch them and use them and maybe encourage you. Yes. Maybe give a word to somebody that helps them. Yes. Amen. Maybe somebody will get saved one yes. Amen. 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 While we're here. Yes. Amen. I believe all you folks are saved. Yes. If you ain't, you should be. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. The most important thing and commitment that we could ever make I'm in saved. our lives is uh, getting saved. Yes. Knowing that the Lord Jesus is our Savior. Knowing that He will forgive us of our sins if we ask Him. Yeah. We have to ask. We've got to believe in our heart and ask with our mouth. Like confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. Got a simple word for us. Uh, and I kind of, like most preachers, debate among myself. That's kind of a strange thing to do is talk to yourself and wonder if it's the right message. Uh -huh. We'll be in John chapter number 6. Real familiar <laughs> scripture. Here. I'll just turn your Bibles there. I'll read just a little bit, not a whole lot. Uh, Angie kind of misses with me. 52 year old. <laughs> I wish I was 62. <laughs> well, he thought he was old. Uh, he thought you was. John chapter number 6. Amen. Uh, verse number five, I'll start right there. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Of course shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pence worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad which has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among many? Yeah. So many. And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. <clears throat> now there was much grass in the place, so that men sat down in a number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sit down, and likewise the fishes as many as they would. Amen. When they were filled, he said unto the disciples, Gather the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. Ask you, Lord, to help us this evening. We pray, Father, that you just give us a word, Lord. But most of all, we pray for your anointing. We pray, Father, that you just move upon every heart that's here. Meet every need, Lord. We pray, Father. We ask you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, very familiar scripture. Amen. Uh, we've heard it so much, we think that it's a kid's fairy tale in a sense uh, that what's getting ready to happen. But really, when you begin to look at the Bible, you begin to look at the the Bible in a different way when you begin to read this story. It begins to tell you this, and it's not a parable. It's a it's a thing and an event that something happened that uh, Christ had made a miracle that was not like any other miracle that he had done. It's mentioned in all four Gospels. There's only one or more scripture that's mentioned in all four Gospels, and that's going to be the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. So the Lord placed it here in the scriptures that we'd understand it just a little bit deeper Amen. than what we really look at it. And we begin to look at this and we can 
we can find different ways to preach it, but uh, I believe that the Lord's wanting me to kind of preach it just in a way that we'll understand it. Amen. Amen. Among each other. Yes. But here we know that the Bible begins to talk about this multitude of people begin to follow him. And the Bible begins to say about 5,000 men. And most people believe that the, uh, wherever there's a man, there's going to be a woman. Yeah. And normally when there's a, a woman, there's going to be a family, so there's going to be children and uh, yeah. those there. We know that the Lord child there is going to be a lad that's going to come forth and, hey amen, he's going to make preparation before he comes. There's all kinds of people that accompany Jesus. When Jesus begins to walk and he begins to do the miracles that he begins to do, there's some folks that come just for the, hey amen, to, to criticize him and find fault with him, but there come, comes that needs a touch in their body. There's some that wants to hear him. You get to speak the words that he speaks because there's never been a man like Jesus. That's right. And I know if you know him, then you know him for a free part That's of his right. sins. Yes. And you know that his word's true, but there's something more just about his word. There's something that we can feel. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yes. There's something in our lives that changes us so dramatic that we begin to follow Jesus. Yes. So here's a crowd of a multitude that begins to follow him. And here we find it, no doubt, that the Pharisees and the scribes, they begin to go and they begin to follow him, trying to find fault and failures in him that they may make accusation against him and maybe turn people's head away from him. Yeah, yeah. But no yeah. doubt that, that Jesus is found with no fault. Amen. Amen. Nothing that's going to come out of his mouth is going to be words that will be disputed, no words that will be lies. There's going to be the truth, the knowledge the truth. And they recognize that about him. Yes. Well, here they begin to have this crowd, and the crowd begin to come together. They begin to walk with Jesus, and the Lord begin to teach them. And some of the places that's in the Bible where it reads that, that the Lord's done some miracles. Yes. And whenever he begin to do the miracles, they begin to watch and, amen, begin to go along with him everywhere that he went. Uh -huh. Amen. And the crowd begin to follow him, and they come late in the evening. And Jesus, knowing already that the crowd's probably going to be hungry, yeah. uh, one side of the scripture says that he wouldn't send them away, at least they faint on their journey. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So he knew that they was weary, and he knew that they was tired, yeah. but he didn't want them to go, and he didn't want them to lay along the right, right side, just yeah. they're hungry. Yeah. So we know that the Jesus here in this scripture begins to tell his disciples, amen. Jesus himself knew exactly what he would do. Yeah. And I wonder sometimes if this message is to you and I. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord's preparing yeah. us and He's making yeah. preparation in our lives that we need to understand. Yeah. Amen. Out of the 5,000 men that was there, yeah. that there's going to be just one young man that understands the purpose of yeah. Amen and the thing and the call of His life. Yeah. Come on, guys. And this is going to be a young man, Amen, that's come prepared, yeah. Amen, for His journey. Yeah. And the yeah. Lord has spoken to each and every one of us. And I hope that everybody here is filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, amen. Because He's going to lead us into the righteousness, into the place yeah. of Christ. Yeah. He's going to show yeah. us direction. Amen. Yeah. He's going to tell us about the truth of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And by Him, we're going to be prepared. Yeah. Amen. For our journey in life. Yeah. 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 And by Him, we're going to know the leading of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We are going to follow yeah. Him. Well, this young man makes preparations. Amen. And it's just remarkable when I came here this evening, amen, that you folks are ready. You made preparation for the revival. Yep. Uh, you didn't have to uh, call on somebody and they make up their mind about singing. You was ready yep. to get up here and sing. Yep. So I commend you for that. Amen. Yep. Even the church that we're at, sometimes uh, uh, they get up to sing and it just uh, uh, hesitate, don't know what song to sing. And yep. amen, looking at one another, just deciding what they're going to sing. Yep. But one thing that I noticed, amen, that you folks come prepared, amen, to worship the Lord. Yes, you come amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You begin to walk into God. this court, amen, with yes. praise, yes. and give this a, a, a glory to God. Yes. That's yes. good, amen, that you're ready to do yes. something. Yes. Well, this young man didn't know the purpose and the call of his life yet. Yep. Yep. Amen. While other men were seeking Jesus, this young man might have just fallen him just for one reason, amen, just out of curiosity. Yep. You know how children yep. is. 
Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They, they want to do what adults do sometimes. And yeah. They want to do things, amen, that normally they don't get the chance to do. Yeah. But this young man began to follow Jesus. Yeah. He knew that probably it was going to be a long day and whether his mom or dad had packed this lunch. But one thing that we know, that he came prepared. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There was something about this boy that was ready. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now we speaking of a spiritual thing, but yet we look at it as a physical thing. Yeah. Yeah. As he began to get hungry and he began to get weary himself, we know that, amen, that uh, uh, us adults, amen, sometimes uh, we would probably not share our food with him. Amen. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I can really testify about that. This is just a common message. Amen. That's right. uh, whenever we're, my children was at home and they was kind of adults, uh, 15 and 16, 17 year old, uh, yeah. amen, there's sometimes that they would hide things on us. Yeah. We might get some goodies and they'd hide them and I'd learn if I was going to keep them goodies, yeah. I'm going to have to hide some myself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. on our journey, <laughs> amen, they would go through the cabinets and they would search things. Yeah. I'm not the only one that's done that happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, when you leave it for kids, they're going to get it. Amen. But here we find that this young man, amen, he was not only prepared to come there, but he wasn't selfish. He was willing to give what he had. Amen. And what I'm going to tell you, folks, if you come to the house of God, amen, and you come prepared, knowing that God can use you and do something with you, you're going to find that God's going to bless you. And every one of us needs a blessing from God. Amen. It's better to give than to receive. See, we understand that because, uh, amen, we're going to reap what we sow. So in giving what we have, then God's going to give us greater than what we give. Amen. So it's a blessing to give. So this little man's not stingy. Amen. Now, there's some folks that are stingy. Yeah, You're going to find that in society. Yeah, they're greedy. Yeah, yeah. They're money hungry. They want everything that they can get and things like that. They don't want to share. Yeah, yeah. But God wants us to share. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Us to give it up. He wants us to yeah. offer to other folks. Amen. Yeah. We possess something that's greater than what monetary things in the yeah. world are. Yeah. We possess the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And He wants us to share Him with everybody that we see. Yeah. Yeah. The disciples are now trying to figure out what's going on in this scripture. Amen. But the Lord knew this to prove himself to them. Amen. So they're making preparation of what to do. Amen. They look at this crowd. And they, amen. They know that it's a great number of people. And they know that the one that spoke up said that we just have so much. And that's not sufficient enough, amen, to supply the needs of all these others, amen. Yes, yes. But then the other one began to speak, Andrew, and he said that there's a lad, amen, that's got five little loaves of barley, yeah. amen, and two uh -huh. little fish, amen. Yeah. Knowing that it's not enough, but he knows that he's got he's to try to do something and figure out something himself. But Jesus is trying to fix them, amen. Yeah. He's trying to prepare the disciples because he knows yeah. that he's getting ready to go be crucified. Yeah. And he knows, yeah. amen, that they're going to have to kind of stand on their own anymore. Yeah. Oh, right. God, right. God, the Lord that yeah. gives us instructions, yeah. amen, yeah. and places us in places, amen, that we can do something, yeah. amen, yeah. when we begin yeah. to understand yeah. that when we come to church, yeah. that somebody's got to give God glory. Yeah. Somebody's got to praise the Lord. And if we're not prepared to do that, then we can't offer other folks things that they need. Amen. Right. Right. You know if somebody comes here and they're broken hearted and they're going through some trials and there's things that they're facing in life they're just not able to get over. Amen. They ain't got much to offer. But there's something about when somebody gets up, amen, and begins to Come praise on. the Lord that causes the whole atmosphere to yes. And I want to be that person. Amen. That's something to give somebody. Amen. Yeah. To offer somebody that I can share. Right. Amen. What God's right. given me. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's yes. easy to smile, ain't it? Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. You know it's contagious whenever you smile. Yes. Whenever yes. you start smiling, other yes. folks start yes. smiling. Yes. Amen. Yes. And there's something about this contagious Jesus. Amen. Yes. And if you got yes. him on the inside, yes. he's going to come out on the outside. And he's going to go this world. Yes. Amen. Yes. But there's yes. something yes. about him that they want to share. Amen. Yes. I don't know about you folks, but I don't want to hide him like I would my lunch from my kids. Amen. I don't want to sit him in a corner, amen, and hide right there. But I want somebody to know about Jesus, amen. So I want to share him at Walmart. 
I want to share at Kroger's. I want to share at my workplace. I also want to share with you folks. Amen. It's the best thing that's ever happened. That's right. Come on. It's good. Amen. So here we find today, man, Andrew says about this lad. He's got five barley loaves and two little fishes. Amen. Yeah. Well, they're looking yeah. at Jesus, and they don't know what to do with this situation because Jesus, in reality, is put it in their hand. Yeah. But he, knowing what he's going to do, he already knew who was going to be yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, know that you don't know who's going to be here. Yeah. So you don't know the need that's going to be before you. Right. But right. God knows already. Amen. Yes. He's just yes. needs somebody yes. to work through. Yes. He needs somebody that's going to come to their prayer life in order. Yes. Amen. They've been seeking God. So through this revival, you folks, you seek God. Amen. Yes. Because yes. they might come a stranger yes. in the midst of you. Yes. And amen. Need something from the Lord. Yes. Not nothing yes. from us, but something from God. Amen. That's going to lift them up yes. and may yes. cause them to get on. saved. Yes. Yes, amen. Well, we find that this little man man came that way. They, man, he didn't share nothing with nobody until yeah. this time right here. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the first time that he ever got into presence of Jesus. Yeah. He's yeah. probably heard about him, and he just wanted to get a little bit closer. Yeah. He probably yeah. thought, man, yeah. this guy is something else. And all the stories I've been hearing about him, yeah. I've just got to see for myself. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's something about Jesus that attracts all kinds of people. Amen. Yeah. So this little boy might have been just out of curiosity, just yeah. Coming along for a ride, not expecting God to use him. There's sometimes in your life that God's going to use you when you don't expect it. Amen. Amen. But you better be ready for that time that God wants to use you. Amen. He didn't use the disciples. He didn't use none of the men of the 5,000. He didn't use the women or the other children. He used this lad, amen, for one of the greatest miracles, amen, that ever happened on the face of the earth that supplied the need to so many people at one time, amen. But it's still supplying needs, amen. Because we look at the impossible and know that it's not impossible whenever God's in arrangements, amen. There's things in our life that you're going to have to go through. There's things in your life that you're going to have to face. But when you know who the supplier of the need is, then you know that he's there beside you. Amen. You know it without a shadow of a doubt, don't you? Amen. I'm telling you the faithful are going to live by faith. Amen. The just is going to live by just. And we're declaring the word of the Lord to you folks tonight. If we'll just put our faith and trust in him, then he's going to supply our needs according to his riches in glory. He's going to meet the needs of the people that's among us. Amen. Needing something from God. We're his workmen. Amen. By his working hand, we become his workmanship of his hands. And now we're in a land that we don't know what's going on, but we have to have a mindset that I'm going to do whatever he says to do. Amen. If he says run, we'll run. If he says run, we'll run. Sends them out. 
He sends them out and he tells them to take no script with them. Yeah. Take no shoes but one pair, amen. No coat or nothing like that. And when you go out, he's going to give you power to lay hands up on the sick. And he's going to give you power to cast out devils. Amen. But here we find it, amen. They're getting ready to operate in the unknown. Amen. Yeah. They've got to be trusting in Him and the work that He spoke whenever He told them, Amen, to fill the baskets. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They begin to fill these baskets and they begin to distribute everything around. And all of a sudden, everybody's got a full stomach. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, I went to some buffets and I've sat at the kitchen table and I've ate until I felt like I was going to bust. But I'm telling you, I want to go to the house of God and get everything that I can get and not have enough. Amen. I want to go and get everything that I can, but I want to leave in such a way that I want more. Amen. Can't get enough of the Lord, can you? Now, you better not get stuffed, amen, but there's no way that you can get enough of Jesus, amen, amen. I've got to have him today. I've got to have him tomorrow. I've got to have him at the end of the week. I've got to have him all the time. I've got breath in my body. I need him more than I need my wife. I need him more than I need my children. I need him more than I need the world. I must have Jesus, amen. Learn the lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Did not learn the lesson. Amen. 
how they seen that and they was in that, amen, and now they're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. What are they afraid of? Yeah. The storm, the winds, and the waves yeah. that was bolstering against the ship? Yeah. Why, they're seasoned fishermen no matter. Uh -huh. yeah. See, the thing that we don't look at this story is the thing that folks don't pay no attention to. Uh -huh. Whenever Peter began to come to Jesus, Jesus said, Come, follow me, I'm going to make you fishermen and men. Amen. This sea of Tyrus, Tyr amen, is where they're at right now. You're going to go over now and you're going to read chapter number 21 of John. And amen, after Jesus was crucified, amen, he's over in the same place, Tyrus, amen. Yeah. He's right there and the disciples has went back, amen, and got on the ship, amen, and cast it out and launched, amen, and back to doing the same thing that they was. Yeah. Yeah. See, they didn't learn, amen. I'm going to tell you, we've got to learn to stay prepared. Yeah. We've got to learn that he's giving us a message. Amen. We spend enough time in to yeah. know what we must do. Amen. Yeah. We just don't pray because uh, we've got something going on. Amen. That's important. Yeah. And, and somebody that's sick, we need to pray all the time. Yeah. We need to be mindful of all yeah. things. Amen. Yeah. The coming of the Lord. Amen. amen. To keep amen. us. Brother. Amen. Yeah. Let us walk in righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to keep a praying. We've We've got to keep a reading. Yeah, we got to yeah. keep coming to church. Yeah, we yeah. got to keep faithfulness. Amen. Yes, but they yeah, forgot yeah. all about it. Amen. Yeah. Jesus has been crucified, but now he's back. Amen. And he looks out there and he begins to holler at the disciples and said, Have you any meat? Amen. Yeah. They're on a fishing boat. They ought to have something. Amen. Yeah. But I'm telling you, they're empty handed. Yeah. Yeah. So we've caught nothing. Yeah. Amen. amen. I'm telling you. You've got to know when you're in this thing right now. Yeah. Hey, amen. And you've been in it for a while. You ought to have something that you can, amen, give somebody to eat. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go completely, amen, opposite of what I'm trying to teach and preach tonight. Yeah. Amen. But Bless do you know, Lord. amen, that fish is flesh? Yeah. Uh -huh. But amen, bread, amen, is what Jesus is. So the flesh and the bread come together as one part. Amen. I'm telling you what it brings greatness to the kingdom of God. Amen. Because whenever this flesh gets under subjection and the bread of life gets in this flesh, it's a new creature. Hallelujah. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. That's right. Amen. But Jesus has to teach them one more time. Amen. Cast your nets on the other side. Amen. All of a sudden, Amen. The Bible said, I believe he said, 153 fish are caught. Yep. How many knows, amen? Amen. That he will supply our needs. Yes, yes he will, brother. Yes, sure. Be ready. Yes. Be spontaneous. Amen. Amen, brother. Wait for the opportunity. Yes. He's looking for each and every one of us. Amen. Yes. amen. He has something in store for every person yes. in this building. Uh -huh. Amen. If we'll make preparation and we'll be ready and we'll not be stingy and we'll share it with everybody else, people will be blessed, won't they? Thank God. Hallelujah for Jesus. Ain't never been a man like Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, as good as some of you folks are, ain't never been nobody like Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. And he's got a church that's still operating. That's still yeah, going is. forward. Yeah, that's still calling yeah, upon yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, that yeah, still yeah, has yeah. faith, amen, that he's able to yeah. still heal the sick, yeah. and die the brokenhearted, yeah. to yeah, save yeah, the lost, yeah, yeah. amen, yeah. deliver yeah. those that are captive. Yeah. He's still in the business of doing these things, yeah. but he needs you and I. Yes. Yeah. 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 Amen. He needs us. Yes. So tonight as I close, Pastor, you come on. <laughs> amen. I thank God for the opportunity. Amen. You folks have been listening. You've been respectful to me. Yeah. I've had some of them fall asleep on me. Oh, uh, but not you folks. Amen. I'm telling the truth now. I have to look back my wife on that one. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, folks. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Are you learning what Jesus wants from you today? Amen. Are you listening to what He wants you to do today? Or are you just running in the motions, I guess? Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord.
This altar is open. If anybody wants to pray, it's not just for the sinners. No. And if you want to know the truth about it, the altar was truly built for you and I who say that we're children of God. Bless the Lord. Hello. If you're here tonight, need us to lay hands on you and pray for you, don't hesitate to come on up. Because God's still in the healing business. Yes, He is. There's still power in prayer. Yes, it is. Glory to God.
Amen. Amen.